<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final edition the for this finale. season, the season finale, for the semester finale, for the Hills of West Virginia, hundreds of thousands of viewers, of course. I'm Stephen Morbius Askin. Hey, I'm Eric Ashby Brown. We got a special guest with us today, Stephen. You want to introduce him? Uh, this is uh, Scott Boyd, a, a Musselman uh, football legend. Uh, he's with us today. Of course, we are honoring the uh, 1974 state championship team. Yeah, we had Coach so, Brown on a little yeah, bit we earlier. Had, yep. Maybe we get all the team on there. Yeah, well, that'll have to be over the summer, though, because yeah, uh, we'll this, is, summer this is the last minutes. one for the semester. We're taking a little break but after they, this. Maybe we come Ms. back Boy, in the summer. Boy, thank you for coming in and spending know. some time with us today on the yeah. show. Yeah. 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 No, we really appreciate all the guests we have, especially Muscleman alumni. We love to have them on. Right. Um, at the end of the day, this is a Muscleman show. Um, now but we have we have hundreds of thousands of viewers. Hundreds of thousands of viewers. So hit subscribe on that yes. button. Soon to be hundreds of millions. Oh, this thing's gonna blow up. It's gonna blow the, up. The, Pat yeah. McAfee, get out of the way. Yeah, we okay. don't need you. We don't yeah. need you. We're we're passing all of them. Uh, but before we get into anything, this is also a celebration because you see, in the first semester, I took a huge loss. Yeah. Um, yeah, you did. I, I did not win the pick'em. No, guess who won the pick'em pick this semester? This guy right here. So we have a brand new trophy for What was the score stats? You lost by three. Oh! oh. But, but we, let's go double or nothing. What was the bet? If the four by, if the four by four yeah, breaks, breaks the record, the record of I don't Steve think that's Campbell, happening. Troy Brill, Beetle Robinson, and uh, Kevin Bain. Unfortunately, well, I that's don't think, what he said. I don't think the I team said it's of not David Zepeda, Nate Lejeur, Nate Dunham, and Jaden Ryan is going to. They're going to. They're going to try hard. But, but bro, I don't think but the end we were actually having hard. this debate yesterday, bro, David. He's he's only running two events tomorrow. He's running on four Might by two and four by four. So that should help him a little I bit. I also saw him but, uh, on the. On the on the middle of the track for about yeah, an hour well, he was after he ran that. He was a little dead. But let's go ahead and bring me my trophy. That's. Just turn around your chair. Uh, 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 yep. uh, uh, it's going to be a surprise. So I only lost by three. Oh, man. This is going to be awesome. Yes. Should I clap too? Morbius, should you clap? Oh, all oh, right. You got now it. this right here. I'm going to wear this for the rest of the podcast here. Uh, and in, in class today. I, I don't think this fits me, though. Yeah. But, um, but I, will, I will be wearing it to, uh, to class. Uh, and we have our another guest who just, uh, or or our other guest. I can't speak English, even though, you know, I, I've taken it for 12, uh, 12 years. I'm gonna let you take everything. I'm gonna talk to him. This is, uh, but yeah, this is. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Boyd, uh, we, when you know, and back in April, March, April, whatever, um, we were covering a lot of WWE. Shockingly enough, because uh, The Rock came back. And, and uh, so you know, this is uh, this is this is pretty cool. Yeah, got a nice little championship so, belt. So uh, we got we got we got a big big show today because we yeah. got two, we know the season finale. We got two yeah. guests on. So two guests. We wanna, never done before. You uh, guys are making yeah. history here for the yeah. Hills of West Virginia today. Okay, uh, it is um, uh, two guests. We've never done this before, so this, this, is, this is uncharted territory for the Hills of West Virginia. Um, but um, but yeah, but anyway, so. Big celebration yeah, I here. I, I won. That works. It's it's it. Mwah, I love it. Um, so let's let's get into it now. So. Yeah, this boy. I, I know you. Uh, you're a graduate from here. You know, and we, we were talking as we were coming up the, the difference of the schools. Uh, so kind of just go through your years of playing football for Musman High School. You can even like because I know back then it was seven through twelve. Oh, you were here seven through twelve. Seven through twelve, and just kind of talk to us a little bit about going up to. You know, playing some of the games that you had or your memories up to your senior year. Yeah, seventh grade was scary because you played seventh, eighth, ninth, and then ninth graders was big. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, Charlie Klein was the coach that year. Coach Klein, I, coach then, was my he was my coach at track. And then eighth grade uh, moved up. Curvin Miller took over. That's not a name that I know. And that was an undefeated team. Uh huh. Uh, we had a biggest line. Bigger than our varsity line that year. So we, you knew by then you had something special oh, going something on. Something going on. Eighth uh -huh. grade, ninth grade, we were seven and one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then moved on up into high school years. It was a good group. Yeah. And, uh, so sophomore year was Coach Kaminsky's last year. Okay, I remember okay. Coach Kaminsky because then he left and went to Martinsburg, didn't right. he? Right. So mm -hmm. then Coach Price mm -hmm. took over then in uh, okay. junior year. 
And we had a decent season. That was a five and five season. Yeah. And then you went to the next year. You were ten and two. Ten and two. So you had a big jump that's in that seventy four yep. yeah. season. Yep, yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. It was it was quite a run. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, again, I mean, you know, I I I have no idea what happened in the run because obviously okay. I was not even a thought yet. Um, but, uh, but you know, obviously. I was you know, bored, we, but I wasn't watching football. Yeah, no, you were probably yeah. watching Blue's Clues. Uh, that, was, that was, it was Sesame yeah. Street. Oh, Sesame Street. Yeah, they didn't have Blue's Clues. Now, I, mean, I actually have played on the high school team before, obviously. Everything's changed now. I mean, football, all of it has changed. But what was it like playing for Coach Price in 1974, especially in, in, the, in a season like that where you guys ended up going to. And you were the quarterback. The so, yeah. I. You know, my one of my best friends, Dave Shelton, was a quarterback on there. So that it's yeah. that special relationship that you have with the coach. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh yeah, he was uh, he was really sharp, and uh, you know he demanded a lot, but uh, yeah. he he was a good educator. So he he'd always have us prepared. I mean, mm -hmm. you uh, you you knew what you were going to face the week before, right? Yeah. And, uh, so. Um, but that 74 thing, um, he changed up the whole offense mid-season. I mean, we were not we were just yeah. running along fine, running a power eye. And the good old power eye. We had a week <laughs> by one week, and all of a sudden we show up, and he says, boys, we're going to put in the wishbone this week. So you went from a power eye to, you know, where, I mean, you're calling the holes like a, you know, like a, a 28 sweep or 27, or, you know, 27 sweep, to now you're running the wishbone where you – really have a lot on you because you're going to have to that defensive tackle that defensive end yeah, we, we only read the end we you just you would read in yeah. for the pitch and everything for the pitch because we had three really good backs i mean and this way we were multi the minute we could go right we could go left in the power eye you know it's kind of given which way we were going right unless you ran a counter is given so and when you had a super athlete like rick brown uh-huh you know he's kind of well your backs were Bre uh, Coach Brown, uh, Raymond Washington, Washington, and then Randy Kirsch. Kirsch, yeah. So definitely so had a. Rick they was, were bigger than the line. That's what Rick was saying. Yeah. <laughs> but when you got a generational player like Rick, I mean, he 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 makes everybody better. Whenever yeah. He played yeah. Rick, so, Rick, so I was very fortunate to come all the way through with Rick. He just yeah. made made everybody better. Now was that uh was that the uh, when you were playing was that the bi state league or the tri state it league? It was bi state league. So yeah. you and, and um, you played a lot of teams out of, of uh, yeah the two teams uh, we lost to was uh, Boonesboro and Smithsburg. Uh huh. Okay. And uh, Smithsburg was always tough because they had uh, well there was a uh, military. You know, base over there, so they had all these kid people move in there. Yeah, they well, uh, Fort Ritchie. Fort yeah. Ritchie was yeah. there, yeah. So they had a lot of talent over there. But to give a little context to the state thing, I mean, we played for the Bi State back in those days. Mm -hmm. And the papers here, there was no talk ever of state playoffs or who won, nothing. There were no, you know, you're, you're in this position. Yeah. There, when Price. Coach Price came into the locker room before the Williamsport game, last game. He said, boys, he said, when we win, we're going to the state playoffs. And we all looked at each other like, what's state playoffs? Because you had no idea. No you just idea. thought, hey, we play these games. and All right, we go home, get ready for basketball or hunting, huh? So this was like, ooh, this is, uh -huh. this is pretty good stuff. Because yeah. uh, Williamsport was, uh, they yeah. were like, Ten and one or something. Wow! And they were, if they won, they could go to their state playoffs. Wow! And uh, so was that the most memorable game of your uh, of your high school career? Was the Williamsport game? That's the one that Absolutely. is still talked about today. That one was just. I mean, the state playoffs were nice, but that Williamsport game was just an emotional uh, game. We were got behind, and then Rick ran a kickoff back there in the second half, and and we just kept pounding and. There you had a quarterback that could throw, uh -huh. which was unusual. So that was different for us, you right. know, trying to yeah. defend. And but uh, you know, it all came down to the uh, we scored in overtime and we got the two point conversion, and then they scored in overtime, and then they were running for their two point conversion. And it stopped. It stopped them at the goal line there at the yeah. at the out of bounds. You know, I remember hitting the guy. And, I don't even remember getting to the locker room. 
<laughs> so, so play, and that's the thing too. A lot of you know, we played both ways back in, in those oh, yeah. days too. Um, and you had Bill Riggleman as your, oh, yeah. you know, the late great Bill Riggleman. Uh, uh, how was he with the defense? Oh, the, Riggy was he was <laughs> tough. But, you know, I I was one of his linemen, so you know I didn't get up close personal. You played uh, safety. I played safety. Yeah, yeah usually so. you put that quarterback here at yeah, safety. So you run I that alley. Safety, you know, and that's where you know I got all state at safety. Awesome. Mm, not a wow. quarterback. I got it. Yeah, you, know, you do all that work in the wishbone, and then you yeah. get it on defense. But we didn't throw a whole lot, so yeah, yeah. quarterbacks. Yeah, we ran. Take take us through that uh, that run. So you got that momentum going in with the uh, with the Williamsport game. Take us through those that, those playoff games too. Then well, the playoff games were a lot different than what they do now. <laughs> I mean, instead of going up to Wheeling Island with all the hoopla and everything, we mm -hmm. got you know the community was wonderful through all this, and okay. you know they've had a steak and egg breakfast, and mm -hmm. everybody was all excited. And, but then we get on bus and we went to Clarksburg uh, Liberty Stadium for the yeah. semifinals uh, and played uh, Mannington, which yeah. is just a school that's not even there. Yeah, anymore. we talk about that. There's like yeah. all these schools that don't yeah. even exist anymore. So that was a you know big time game and uh, we won 28-20 or something. Yeah, it was, it was, all of them were close. close. It was close. And uh, so then the next week we come to you know uh, we go to. A, Kinston of all places, and we didn't even know, we wouldn't all even fit in a locker room. <laughs> One time, and that was take turns changing. Yeah, Hamlin. We yeah, played, played Hamlin. Okay. So, you know, I don't even know where that school yeah, is. Gonna, it's is that way exist? north, uh, southern. Now is Lincoln. Is Lincoln okay. okay? But Hamlin's was way north out along the river somewhere. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, but. Uh, yeah, that was See, they had the home field. You played the home field advantage. No, they, they they were from down. Oh, okay, south. okay. This was center of the state. So. I got gotcha. you. But uh, yeah, it was an eight to nothing. Wow. Win, so. Now Rick didn't tell us this. Did did he score the the winning touchdown? He did. <laughs> he did. We uh, finally, I think, we got a fumble or something. You know, on the thirty or forty, and then was able to yeah punch in a score and. Rick was so good at, uh, you know, they were on him, so we could always, you know, fake him, and then I could tuck it and, and, tuck it, and yeah. go for yeah. the two-point conversions. We did that a lot. So okay. Yeah. yeah, we were in that sprint out special all the yeah. time. Dave would always keep it and go in. Yep. So that, that worked for that. And then it was just, you know, celebration after yeah. that. Yeah, well, well, that's, you know, you already kind of touched on the community before the state championship yeah. game and in the state playoffs, what was it like? You go, you win a state championship, first time this area probably ever really saw oh, anything yeah. like that. What was that like? Yeah, how far was I the mean, traffic backed yeah. up to? Well, what we did, <laughs> we all met at what was the Berkeley Plaza out mm -hmm. on the okay. north end of okay. town, and um, we pulled in there, the Berkeley Plaza was full of cars. I mean, really? This is late at night, and, and it was full of cars, and, and they proceeded in a parade all the way up Route 11. So, and then met up the school, and there was even more people at the school waiting for us. Yeah, that's the, that's the special thing about South Berkeley that I think that the other areas of the county really don't have is just uh, you know the connection that we have. We grew up playing baseball here in South yeah. Berkeley. We played football here in South Berkeley. Went you know seven through twelve at Mossman. I know Hedgesville was seven through twelve at one time, to, to, but it was own centered all of itself. And I think that's kind of just was the unique thing about. The South Berkeley community. Oh, that you yes. had. I mean, there were some special guys that took care of us through all that stuff. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, before the uh, Mannington game semifinals, uh, Coach Price walked in and s some boosters gave all the backfield white cleats wow. to the in the game. Wow. So that was. So you had them like. Yeah, so they, nice. they took care of us. Yeah. yeah oh, that yeah. was pretty cool. There, and, uh, uh, there is a folklore out there. Maybe you can settle this because I've talked to people. I didn't ask Rick. But supposedly, and I heard this to the Greek line, that mm -hmm. uh, you know that uh, 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 Coach Riggleman was a superb athlete, yes. played on that 65 yes. championship team, and, and allegedly he raced Coach Brown one time. Do you know anything about this? And I, I've heard different stories. <laughs> I heard he didn't win. I've heard he won. Uh, do, you, do you know anything I, about this? I can't shed much light on we that. Can't, we oh, can't find oh, anything wow. out. Wow. So I don't no, know. I don't know. If, uh, he was fast though. Yeah, that's what I, I mean, that's what I've heard he too. Motor. 
Um, you know, looking back now, I mean, I knew what it was like to go play in a championship game. We got an undefeated, and we just came up short. We lost to East Bank. But to think about you being the first team, 50 years that you've had, the Musman tradition, when you and I walk down there, you see all the, 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 the sports memorabilia, you see the Hall of Famers. What does it mean to you to be an Appleman? Well, just a lot of pride. It, uh, you know, it was just a good time and spent with all those good people. You know, uh, I want to shout out to all of our linemen, our, yeah. our, our huge linemen that averaged probably 160 pounds. <laughs> yeah. And we had 135 pound guards. And yeah. Terry Akins was the big guy at maybe 210. If Terry, he, yeah. If he was that, you know. So, yeah. but uh, just, no, it was just a being an Appleman, you know, to this day, just still. You know, we try to give back and and do what you know we can for the programs, and just like everybody else did for us back then. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Always thank the people that that, that help get you where you are. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Boyd. We uh, really appreciate you coming on. Like I said, we love to have especially Muslim and alum on. Yeah, you know, you and especially with the 50th anniversary. Yeah. That's that yeah. is awesome. Yeah. We want, we're yeah. so glad that you. Uh, how did this happen, Stats? How did we, we, just the hundreds of thousands of people listen? Oh, yeah. So this interview, so we shared Rick's interview, right? Mm -hmm. We shared Rick's interview on Facebook from our YouTube page. And then uh, I think it was Miss Joyce Keys who tagged Scott in the post. Oh, wow. and was like, hey, would you like, you should go on the podcast. Absolutely. Wow. You and I have sat down before and had talks yeah. about, I love yeah. sitting yeah. down and talking football and everything. Um, so thank you for being on the show. Thank you yes. for the uh, yes. Yes. For uh, all that you've done for the Muslim community over the years, and we really, truly do appreciate uh, just taking some time out to come on our little podcast for the yeah. day. Yeah. Thank you for having. Yeah. Thank you very much. All yeah, right. nice young man. Yeah. Thank Good you. Yeah, thank here. Uh, again, thank you to uh, um, uh, Mr. Scott Boyd uh, for coming on. Now we have again unprecedented history here. We have a second guest. Thank you, sir. Uh, it is. Mr. Jake Stevens, you probably have heard of him. Have you heard uh, of Jake? Know, he may or may not be a big name here uh, at Muslim. Hey, listen, yeah, and he Jake all, yeah. came in and saw me seventh period. And the, the kids, when he walked in, this was their expression. Mm. Now, if you're watching this or you're listening to it on Spotify, you don't know, but they were just gasping. And they're like, what it just happened? Yeah. So, Jake, thank you. Uh, I know we've Appreciate been trying it. to work Appreciate back it. and forth coming in here. Uh, so yeah. thanks for being on the show. Well, now, Jake, here's the first question I'm going to ask. We've had your dad on, okay? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Superintendent uh, Ron Stevens, we have you on. Uh, in the near future, are we going to be able to have your kid on? Okay. <laughs> have all three generations. Uh, all the three generations. Yeah, maybe. Your I'm granddad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my, oh. Uh, your granddad I mean, was uh, a coach in West Virginia. I now have okay. a, a little niece, so that could be. Oh, RJ. Works, yeah. You know, okay. you know maybe. 15 years down the road yeah. or something. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah, two older brothers both went here, so the, the possibilities are endless, right? Yeah. All right. Well, you know, like I said, I just, you know, I was wondering because, uh, you know, we uh, we like dynasties here. Right. Like Hills of West Virginia. Well, Jay, catch, up, catch us up on what you've been doing. What uh, What's happened to you this last year or so? Just kind of tell the yeah. viewers what's going on. Uh, so I've been fortunate enough to play in the NBA G League. Uh, if anybody doesn't know, that's like the development league for yep. Yep. the NBA. It's basically like the JV team. Okay. You know, like sometimes you have guys that are on, you know, only varsity, and those would be your NBA players. Then you have guys that kind of come up and down, play right. a couple quarters here, a couple quarters there. Um, and then, you know, the situation I'm in where I'm just on, on the, the G League team. So yeah. it was cool. I was in Sacramento. I was with the Kings for a while. And then, uh, you know, about halfway through the season, got moved to D.C., which I was thrilled about. You get to be closer to home. Mom and dad can come home. Yeah, got people yeah. To, to watch games and, you know, come out and support and everything. So okay. that was really sweet, too. And kind of got to see two different programs, which is always good. So, right. Yeah, yeah, I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, now, you played here at Musselman. Okay. Then you went. You played college ball. Fact. You've uh, gone and now played pro ball. Can Fact. you just kind of go into, uh, you know, I guess – what it's like yeah. playing at each level. I mean, yeah. you know. No, I mean, it's each way there's a step and each way there's a, a learning curve. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's been uh, like kind of the, the testament of like hard work and everything is like I came in as a freshman, even at Musselman, like I played varsity, but I wasn't 
you know, great. I wasn't yeah. where I wanted to be. And then each year, you know, you progressively get better until your senior year, you're winning at the state tournament, which is something that, you know, I never yeah. thought was possible. Yeah, that state tournament. And then, yeah. uh, you know, in college, very similar. First two years of VMI, like, you know, seven points a game, solid, but not where I wanted to be. And then yeah. you make a, a bigger jump and, you know, hoping that that path continues. That would be that And would then be going good. off to Chattanooga. <laughs> yeah. And, mm -hmm. and getting into, I mean, I can remember watching those games on ESPN and stuff. Uh, the the uh, your tournament games yeah. of just getting really yeah. really close, maybe yeah. possibly getting into the big the big dance. Yeah, the big dance was. I mean, that's always like the you know they're dangling at the end. I always think of the I think it was a State Farm commercial where the guy's like, oh, you got to be quicker than that. He's got yeah. a dollar. He's dinging yeah. out there, and yeah, I mean we were right there. We were in the championship game. I think it was you know a single digit game with a couple minutes left. Right, so we were right yeah. there, but mm -hmm. yeah, unfortunately. Berman wins it and then goes on to win a, a game in the tournament in, in, versus yeah, UVA, in, which is, you know, his tournament. In the tournament, tournament right? so, and, yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. Yep. Uh, so the Joker has just won his mm. third, third MVP. That's right. You know, when you look at the big men of old, when, you know, when I was growing up, you had Kareem and Olajuwon uh, playing in the paint. That – that big man game has changed. Yeah, certainly. Uh, for a perimeter, how how has that affected your play as a big man uh, going into the NBA? Well, it's it's weird when you look at it. Like, you know, there's there's so you got Jokic, you got Embiid, and then outside of that, you really don't have too many big guys that were just dumping the ball into the post to getting a lot of post ups. Right. So, a lot of what the big position has become is pick and rolls. Um, you know. Whether you're rolling to the basket and they pass to you, and you got to figure out: Do I score it? Do I pass it? Like, what do I do here? So that's kind of the modern big man role. Um, and then I feel like I bring a little bit of shooting, bring you yeah. know a little bit of the playmaking and stuff that you know other guys are maybe more of a lob threat. You know, you could throw an alley oop to him mm -hmm. or something where that's not necessarily right. my game. So uh, you know, just trying to do something different and uh, you know put my take on it. I guess yeah. you say. Yeah. Yeah. Your spin. Yeah. Uh, well, now again, you play for the uh, what is it? The is it the Capital City Go Go? Yeah. Is that what they yeah, think we right. are? Uh, now, how do we get that gear? How do <laughs> we get that gear? Uh, that'll be that's a, I don't know that's a yeah. Google thing that's a you got as dad. Yeah, we're an extra large. <laughs> double X, make double. Now X. I'm a Wizards fan. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, unfortunately, I'm a Wizards fan. <laughs> you know, they're, they're horrible. We're building, man. We're but, uh, building oh, no, well, I, I've, uh, when I heard they were actually going to go into a rebuild, I mean, yeah. I was just like, oh, yep. thank you, God, finally yep. this is happening. Uh, you know, but just, again, kind of go kind of go into that, you know, G, you kind of alluded to it. It's like JV and, and yeah. varsity. Have you been able to play with any guys yeah. so far that have actually gotten caught up to the league? Yeah. And, uh, you know, just what what's, yeah, yeah, yeah. what's it like? It's it's crazy. So we're very fortunate with the with the go go. You're in the Wizards facility yeah. every single day. So like we'll practice either before or after the Wizards. So have a lot of interaction with them mm -hmm. on, on a day to day basis. And you you do like it is crazy. You do see like the ins and out of the program, and like there is something being built there, which yeah. is you know really awesome to see. It's cool to be a part of, mm -hmm. um, even though I'm like a, a minuscule part of it. But um, not so much in, in D.C. because I kind of came there mid-season, but mm -hmm. when I was with Sacramento, you know, going through training camp and, and different things like that, I got to play against, you know, their big men, so Demontis yeah. Sabonis, like one of the best wow. bigs yeah. in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. um, got to play against Alex Len, their backup big mm -hmm. man. De'Aaron Fox is out there, and it's, it's really cool to just kind of see these guys come mm -hmm. in every day in the summer when they don't have to be there, and, you know, they're really committing their time um, to work with, rookies, G League guys that are, yeah. you know, the, the chances of us making the NBA are slim to none, and they're willing to come in and spend their time with us. Yeah. You know, I kind of took a lot from that. Now, you are in the league, uh, so my question would be this. Go. Okay. <laughs> Who's the go? Is it LeBron, oh. Michael Jordan? Oh, man. You know, this guy right oh, here is probably going to say Larry Bird. Uh, Larry, Larry Bird. I do wear 33. So Larry Bird Larry is Bird the greatest trash talker of all time. Special place in my heart. Thank you very much, <laughs> Uh, Y'all, so we're going to have him do the, the decision when I, I go. Uh, I've wanted to have a GOAT debate with one of our guests for the longest time. All right. I'll, uh, go, uh, I'll go Kareem. Kareem. Okay. Oh, oh, that's, that's a sleeping Well, hey, right while we've got him on here, let's do, let's do some pick -ems. Let's talk some NBA. Yeah, let's, let's talk some NBA here. Playoffs and stuff like that. Well, yeah, well, I well, mean, you got, I'm uh, someone who absolutely loves, uh, you know, 
whenever we get a series like, let's say, Sixers and um, oh, the Sixers uh, Knicks. Knicks. Yeah, but that's last, done. We're Knicks last, Pacers. I know. Last night we had Knicks Pacers. Knicks Pacers. Well, yeah, now we got Knicks Pacers, so I'm going to the bracket here. All right, let's I, talk Knicks Pacers. Let's talk this. Okay, I think the Knicks are like the Rocky Balboa team. They're <laughs> they're just scrappers. Get up off the mat. Hard. Is Thibodeau playing those guys too long? We're starting to see some injuries come in. I don't have a choice. I know. Yeah. I know. No. But I'm opening up that question to no, you. you it know? Is. is it something that – and you're right, because Randall's out and stuff like this. Yeah. you got to play, and that's typical. But is that going to come back? Are they going to have enough if they can get through this? They're two and lead. Yeah. You know, are they going to be able to get in and then possibly play in the finals and still have some gas going? Look, it's, Who you got in this series? It's tough. Uh, I mean, definitely I would take the Knicks uh, in this one. But I will say, like, if you look at this, the NBA as a whole, the talent is so concentrated on, like, the West Coast, it feels like, because it yeah. honestly, it does, and that's what three, we've been talking about. three, four teams out in the West, I could all see winning the championship. Right. Really, yeah. just one team in the East. Thank you, um, and that's the Celtics. Obviously, Thank I wouldn't. I wouldn't that's what I said. They're my else. pick. Yeah. They're my so, pick. Uh, and as Tibbs playing everybody too much, it's the chicken or the egg. Sometimes you have to play okay, people that's, that's point because point. people are are hurt. Is he, are they hurt because they're playing too much? I mean, they're professional athletes. They have the best caretakers in the world. That true, and yeah. you know the travel from that, Indy to New York isn't too crazy. So I'm sure there's a round the clock treatment. I'm, you know, if they can go, I'm sure they're going to go. Um, so you got the Knicks. Give me yeah. the Knicks. I got the Knicks. the Knicks. No, uh, I got the Knicks. Yeah. Now I want you to know, to pick there is no right money now. at all on the line here. This is <laughs> purely call, pride yeah, and for yeah, trophies. Yeah, it's all right, right, so let's so get all for here. Let's get another uh, series: Cavaliers well, and Boston. I was going to say Cavaliers, yeah, Boston. Boston. I'm a Boston fan. I agree. I'm not a Boston Larry, fan. I Larry actually Bird. despise the Celtics, yeah. but uh, they're really good. Dennis, so. Dennis Scott, you know, uh, Danny Ainge, Joe Missoula. Mm. Joe Missoula. I'm definitely. Yeah. So I have definitely. If you walk into my classroom, you've seen it. I got a Larry Bird. A poster from oh, yeah. 1978 with the Sycamores. Yeah. So I've always yeah. liked them. I'm picking Boston. Yeah. I'm picking Boston. Boston for sure. Yeah. I actually have a, a quick funny story with mm, Joe Mazzulla. Okay. okay. Um, so he came to Hedgesville one time to scout Trayvon Wesco. Which and, I, I had an opportunity to coach yeah, immediately. Yeah. And I'm, so I'm in eighth, eighth grade at the time. Um, and my dad, like, doctors up his business card, my dad's business card, and, you know, puts Jake Stevens – class of 2018, mm-hmm. you know, here's my phone number. And he's like, go give this to Joe Mazzulla. And I'm like, ah, I'm like, I don't know. So I go over and just kind of like sneak it to him real sneakily and kind of walk away. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, Joe Mazzulla at least has my business card out well, there. Well, Joe Mazzulla, if you're listening, Trayvon, yeah. if you're listening, we need you to get you on the show somehow. Yeah, yeah, it's Joe Mazzulla. Trayvon, you remember Coach something. Brown. I coached you in football <laughs> back with the Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Trayvon's always running around. So we got we got the yeah, uh, Celtics. The Celtics. What a, how awesome would a Knicks Celtics? I want it. I need it more than I need oxygen right now. That's All how right. much I Let's want. Let's go to the West. Series. But yeah, we got the we got, Nuggets. We got the Nuggets, Nuggets and the T Wolves. Nuggets right now they're up yeah. two or the the T Wolves are up two yeah. uh, two L right now. I mean, face of the league, Ant Edwards is. Yeah, I mean he's coming for the title, and if he was to win a title this year, like. Where does that put, you know, he's 23, I think. Mm. Like the next is, LeBron. That is mm. insane mm. stuff. And I'm he, not going to say I want to compare him that right now, but the next LeBron. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely, I, you know, we've kind of transitioned away from LeBron and Curry as our face of the league. Yeah. Kind of like searching for You're our, searching our for the new guy. face, yeah. Yep. That's, um, yep. yeah, that's yeah, who Connor said he's, he's now. I like him. Anthony Edwards. Yeah. The Warriors said they passed on him because he lacked star ball. Wrong. Where are the Warriors now? <laughs> Wrong. Where, where are they? That's where that they might right be. They, he lacks star quality. Um, That's got to be the dumbest reason can, to not take a guy. So can the Nuggets what? come back with with a uh, MVP? A two? We have, they got the MVP. Can they come back and win this series? Honestly, I don't believe so. Mm, I would take. The, all right. I would take the Wolves in six. Um, I do think the Nuggets will get two games, but okay. their defense is just. I mean, it's. Maybe a top five defense in NBA history. Wow. Like they are just playing at okay. an all time level. Did you hear that? Did you hear that, boss man? Yeah, defense. I did. That's, top what they, five. that's what they played back in the eighties. <laughs> mm. right. Oh, oh, when uh, when uh, Michael Jordan couldn't win a championship, couldn't <laughs> even win a game in a playoffs. <laughs> yeah. So mm. let's look at Boomers. this. The last series. The last series. Okay. 
I'm not gonna say. <laughs> you got no, you no. got Dallas and you got OKC. Yeah. OKC. A very, I really like very OKC. young OKC. I really like OKC. That's one zero right now. Yeah. OKC. Mm-hmm. Four. And by the way, I four. think we're all three with the Timberwolves, right? Yeah. We chose that. Yeah. So what are we saying with this Thunder. last one? I think Oklahoma City. I this, want Luka to win a championship this, so bad. This is I love Luka. I want Luka to win a championship. Kyrie. Kyrie. Yeah, I can do without Kyrie. <laughs> what, what, I like Kyrie. What do you say to the Luka bird comparisons? Ooh. Uh, can I, think I have heard a lot of the older gentlemen talk, and that's what they would. They said if Larry were to be in the league today, he would be like a Luka, but have a higher IQ. I just sent this mm. to last night to mm. – to uh, to Connor because he doesn't believe me, but Bobby Knight was giving an article about how Larry Bird has the best hand-eye coordination of anyone that he's ever seen. And Bobby Knight coached what three undefeated teams yeah. and national championships, and the best he's ever seen. Uh, I like that comparison. If you like the game where Larry Bird just decides he's going to shoot left-handed, is one of the craziest things that uh, you know we could ever see, Kyrie. So you have to think. So Kyrie won a game with the left-handed floater over Jokic later in the season. World goes crazy. Now imagine you do that and score forty, mm. like Larry does. That is, hey, and he could back it up. Yeah. He could back it up. Yeah. Oh, you know, he, he 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 is the greatest trash talker of all time. That's you know? what you say. Yeah, the greatest right. trash talker of all time. So we would see a Boston, New York, at least what we're yeah. picking, a Minnesota, Oklahoma City, a big, I love like that. small market, big market East, the biggest you could get, small market. Who comes out of that, guys? I'm saying I'd like to see Boston, Minnesota. I think, Give me mm, Boston, Minnesota. God, you, I would love to see New York, New York, and OKC because okay, okay, you're a, big and different. That's blue and orange. Blue I, I, orange. I'm really going against my brain here, and I'm All just going right. with my heart. I like it. But I'm I, also I just don't like Boston. Yeah. I, I can't stand Boston. I like no. Joe Missoula, but I don't like. I, don't I, like, I, I, I thought you said you're picking Boston. I thought they are my pick, <laughs> but I I've searching. already won. He's I've already won the up. championship, so I mean, so what are we doing matter. here? I mean, yeah, I, I, you, <laughs> if I, I don't got to pick. I don't got to be right. I just got to be controversial. Yeah, and if, I, uh, if I had to pick a champ, I would say Boston. I'm picking Boston, too. I think I would love to see that. So, in the context and of And then this, have, the, have the, uh, the world champion, <laughs> Coach Joe Missoula, on the hills of West Virginia. I'll give him a call. And the, Try it. In the context if of – If you're not here, next, you come in next week. We're doing it. We're guys. We're just joking. If we get Joe Mazzulla on, if we get Joe Mazzulla on, back. ladies and gentlemen, we are. You ain't back. graduating. Yeah, I ain't graduating. Oh. Uh, this is I'll too just, big. I'll just fail and, and come no, back. No, no, just don't go to the uh, breakfast uh, and stuff. Up, Joe He'll write you a note on the Hills mm. of West Virginia podcast in a dorm room on the campus of WVU sitting beside Steve. Oh my gosh. that would be. Can we get like our faces? Can we I will make sure if, if we can get Joe Mazzulla on, I will year. zoom you guys let's in. Let's do a call in show. Hey, let's do it next year. Every next year. Thursday, whatever. I'll have first period planning. Yeah. Now, so. here's the big talk. We're talking about goats and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, we're going to throw this. We got we got Joker. We got a big. Mm-hmm. We got a big sitting right in here mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Okay? Let's do this. Top five bigs Ooh. of all time. Ooh. All right. Ooh. So, who wants to go first? Oh, and we can throw them out. We can just go down the list. All right, so I'm going to start with Kareem. Take I think I'm, I'm definitely putting Kareem on my big list. Uh, there's, Jack, yeah, there's, I was going to say. It's not your turn. It's not Zach's turn. We'll this we'll go this go this so I'm going to say Kareem definitely. He, he, we'll go, okay, and then you'll go Shaq, so we'll go this way. Okay, all right. All right. I'll take, I'll take the, the third pick. Um, it's going to be tough to argue. I'll go Wilt. Ooh. Okay, Ooh. Will. So now we only got room for two more. Yeah. yeah. Oh. You got Jokic, oh. Embiid, Russell. Oh. oh. Yeah, Ooh. Russell. Russell. Do you, yeah. I mean. So we got Shaq. We got Shaq. Two fathers. We get, we're going old school. Yeah. Oh, we got three old school. Destin. We're the big Shaq. Players. All right. You made this pretty easy for me. Um, I, this is the last pick, right? Last one we have. Um, I'm gonna five. I'm gonna go with new school, um, very new school. Obviously, right? I think when it's all said and done, I think he's gonna win maybe two more championships. Okay. Better be um, Jokic. Okay. All right, I want to. All right, time out. Time. Okay. So here comes the argument in there. 
You're, you're saying if and buts. Danny Don Meredith on Monday Night Football said, if ifs and buts were candy nuts, we'd all have a good Christmas. Well, I'm not. Are you putting him over the dream? Are you putting him over Akeem Olajuwon, yes. who won, how, what, two championships? Two at uh, at uh, Houston, back-to-back? Yep. When Jordan oh. was out. Yeah. Okay, so Jordan's out. That's true. Are we putting Joker over Look, Akeem Olajuwon? Three good. MVPs already. Three times. He's got the case. Uh, he's got the case already. Uh, the way I look at Ghost. And we got to look at who's left. Five. It's who else is on the team. Yeah, and who's if you're who, carrying your team from what any position, you're in the conference. Yeah, and Joe. That's is, why I'm definitely putting who Kareem. Who else was on that team? You had Clyde Drexler. You Clyde had God. you had uh, Robert Ory. Robert Ory jumped around every. I don't know where he was that year, but I mean, Are there any other that man has the Robert Ory has more no. rings than he does fingers. I mean, the best yeah. the best player they have. Outside of him, when it comes to the playoffs, is maybe Jamal Murray, but like Jokic he's is playing with any Jokic. Any other Jokic, right. when we are looking at at the time. All right. Well, we're, we're we're also looking at this generation. I'm gonna make an argument. We're looking at this generation. I don't generation mind that league. pick, but I'm just making an argument. Jokic is without a doubt the most valuable player in the league right now. You take him off of the Nuggets and put him on maybe let's say Here's let's say the Wizards. They they the Wizards are at least an eighth seventh seed. Maybe six, yeah. right? In the you know, east, in, in, the, in the, probably. Oh, probably, yeah. In the East, you got to take into account how bad the East is. That that right there is that's just the impact. Whereas maybe an Embiid, I don't think he has that type of an impact. Joke and stuff. So that's why he's the most valuable player. I, he's I, he's I, the best big in this generation, one hundred percent. Sort of has that impact if he was on the court more than what he wow. was. Wow. Well, that's, well, that's, that's the, the other better. thing. The the durability of Jokic. He never gets hurt. He's always playing. He plays through everything. The guy, True. the and again. Okay. Now I know the game has completely changed, but he can shoot. He's a big who can yeah. shoot, and I think you got to put that and and you know to perspective. When I you're love at it. Bill Russell and Bill Russell. If you're listening, you come know, on to the show. Definitely, you know I love the Celtics, but are we putting Bill Russell ahead of Akeem Olajuwon? I'm trying to make a yeah. point for Olajuwon. I love the dream. I love the dream. Some of the best footwork in the game. I'm okay with anything. But, uh, <laughs> but we can only have five. All right, I'm going to throw another one out there for you guys. What about Tim Duncan? We left him off the list. I like the big fundamentals. We left Duncan off the list. Yeah, but we got to have a Two modern championships. guy. We got to have a modern but, guy. Why? Why do we have to have a – Because best I, of all time. I'm young. Maybe they haven't got there. Unfortunately, the argument against Duncan would be, like, if you take Duncan and put him on a different team – System. I don't know if he has that same exactly. success. So we're saying the same maybe thing about the admiral. Mm-hmm. Is Duncan better than the admiral? Are we putting him? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I hate saying that because I love David Robinson, yeah. but I think I think you're right in there with it. Most dominant player I ever saw. I got two of them in my youth, and then you know, as a as a later teen slash going in that was uh, Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Nobody could stop him, and then Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. Shaquille yeah. O'Neal, and the, there's nobody that dominated. If I'm going to go play a game of 2K, I'm taking Shaq. <laughs> I'm taking whatever team Prime Shaq is on. Stop <laughs> it. So, no so we we stop with bigs. I we think, got some time. We got some time. I don't know. Uh, we got ten. We I stop think, with well, bigs. I think yeah. I think we're done with big or uh, done with the basketball talk. We got one more thing I want to know. Now Let's listen. Go. Pop culture now is what we're talking about. Hip hop culture is what we're talking about. I'm sure you've probably heard about it recently. Lamar. Kendrick Lamar yes. versus Drake. Yeah. Who Kendrick, are you taking? Kendrick who's Lamar. Won the beef? Lamar. I, who's winning or who? who's winning and who are you taking? Like you know, I'm picking uh, Kendrick I mean, we are, Lamar. It's kind of too late to do the pick. Em. Look, yeah. Who is Kendrick Lamar? I have no idea. <laughs> Look, I told him to pick Kendrick Lamar. Last <laughs> I think week. is Drake from Canada. Yeah. Drake would be from Canada. So, so one of my guys picked Drake to win the whole NCAA tournament. Oh, nice. Just yeah. because of, of Drake. Well, WVU now has Drake's coach. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Oh, we got a bell. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. We yeah. got like, look, They run look. by themselves, man. Okay. This is the Hills of West Virginia podcast. I Those think kids copy a bell ringer. Kendrick Lamar is probably one in the public eye right now. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, Drake can just say, hey, look, here's the top 100. I have 75 of them. I have made all the money in the world. I can make a song that makes a billion dollars right now. 
But Kendrick, no, I will say this though. The Beastie the Boys would beat both of them. I will say this about <laughs> if the, the Beastie Boys came on, they would beat both. Them. Both of them would. Well, I will say this about the beef, right? Drake, we talk about all. I this have no factor. idea what's going on. Right Drake, now. I can't say Drake's ever really made a song that makes me feel like, wow, that's deep. Like you know, like I have to think about what I'm listening to. I've never heard any of. Them. Whereas is that Kendrick, what you want? is that what you want out of music? I think you got to be able to make hits, but I think you also got to be able to have. It's art. It's art it at the end of the art. day. It's got to make you feel something. Drake uh, makes the Mona Lisa's masterpieces. This is what you're gonna listen to. Well, no, years. I think Kendrick. Guys, have you ever I heard Sabotage? <laughs> have you ever heard that song? Okay, ah, well, here guy. we go. We got a little video, bit of time. I don't know if you listen to much rock. I know he does. Give me your top five rock bands of all time. Man, this show has just gone off the rails of the we crazy are. train. It's the last show. It's the last show we're uh, ever doing in this wait, classroom. Rock, like, just what are we talking about? Rock, like, like we, well, like we're talking all types of metal, from grunge to oh, every, new every metal. metal. You can go right, to death metal, it. but we're not. So the Southern top rock. bands, uh, yeah, Southern rock. All right, let's pick we're anything. Going. Hey, well, all four. Ready? All One. I'm got. I got the Beatles. Mm, okay. <laughs> you pick a mm. I, I got, love them. I love I'm them, but. I love them. I got Pink Floyd. I love Pink Floyd. Oh, wow. Floyd. How did this fall to four? ACDC. Come on. Uh, he got my ACDC. That's awesome. Fall? So I got to pick the last band. Ep- hey, I'm going to look at the band that has stayed the test of time, started the 1970s, and is still making music. Is my Beatles of my generation, you too. Mm. Uh, wow. That's one. Oh, wow. wow. Ooh. Yeah. Over but, rage against the machine. Well, yeah, yeah, rage rage. I like Rage, Solomon nah, Cobb, but not. I'm not putting him in as the greatest of all time. In that, yeah, I'm I'm going with you too. Yeah, I mean, wow. they start with wow. Boy, I will follow, and they're still making music. They're, in they're the still sell, they're, they're, in they're the still spirit. selling. Out I will hey, say, hey, what, what other band do you know that the lead singer won Nobel Peace Prize? What other band also infiltrated the new iPhone release at one point and just put their song on every? But, iPhone but, yeah, iPhone exactly. Movie. Every, I tell you well, who didn't do it, Drake. Drake. Drake didn't do it. Drake didn't do that. Kendrick probably did it, but I will also say this. One band, honorable mention here, I like them. This is just a personal, but that's all music is. It's just we subjective. Got but um, But, you know, one band <laughs> that I think should be considered, okay, all right, is Black Sabbath. Super ahead of their time, super heavy. Listen like to it. Iron Man like and it. tell me that was made in the early so 70s. Are you going Ronnie James Dio or, or Ozzy? Because you had two lead singers. Oh, Ozzy. The Ozzy. No, like after Ozzy yeah, left. Yeah, I am too. I, All right, same thing with hmm. you. Bon Scott or Brian Johnson. You got Bon Scott old school, and then 1980, then you got Brian Johnson. Yeah, probably Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson. Johnson. Yeah. Okay. Liberal. Literally. All old school. All originals. All originals. The OGs. Okay. okay. Motley Crue. Yeah. Motley Crue. Mm-hmm. I saw Motley Crue in concert. Uh, ne- uh, Vince Neil does not have a voice left. How did no one mention Zeppelin? <gasps> How did nobody mention that? Show's over. What did we do? He picked Leonard Skinner. That's why we didn't pick. He yeah. picked Leonard why Skinner. Why did he pick Leonard Skinner? <laughs> what? That's my favorite. I mean, listen. Uh, go and listen to Stairway to uh, Heaven, Tangerine, and then come all back. Although there's Leonard been a Skinner debate. By, Sean Kane had this debate that said they were uh, him. Shout out Sean Kane. Shout out to Eric Chrisman if you're listening. And John Wright. John Wright played football with me. Said that. Zeppelin IV is now overrated because it's been overplayed. Mm. Mm. Have you have you got to the point where you heard? Okay, I've heard, you know, Stairway to Heaven too many times. I uh, there will never ever be a time that I will listen to Stairway to Heaven and be like, man, I've listened to this so much, I want to stop it. It's such a so you disagree song. with John Wright? John Wright, you heard it right here. I can listen Morbius to that song disagreed with all you. day long. But honestly. I, I think my favorite Zeppelin song is probably Tangerine. Tangerine I is love right Tangerine. Too. Okay. Yes. It's such a good song. Tangerine. It's such a good song. Oh, God, so. What do you think it was? What's your favorite Leonard Skinner? Favorite Leonard Skinner? Yeah. Uh, Tuesday's Gone. Tuesday's Gone. What's I, the name? only Leonard Skinner that I know that was uh, uh, Sweet, uh, Home Sweet Home Alabama. Mine is Let It Be, and I'm going to explain to Ooh. the listeners why. Ooh. Because Let It Be is an ending of that generation. The 60s were so tumultuous and so diver- divisive that even the Beatles couldn't survive. Okay. Yeah. They, they couldn't. They break up in 70. It, that, it ends them. So let it be to me, and I know there's a lot of other Beatles songs that are, seem more poignant, but that's mine. Well, ACDC, what about you? 
Back in Black. I mean, that's, okay. that I mean, was the classic. Monumental like, because Bon Scott passes away. They don't think they're going to have a band. They get this Brian Johnson come in, and the first they hit this in 1980, like a year after his death, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, it was." We got something here. We, it, this is it. They're like back. The start. Well, they well, back. everyone always talks about the 60s, but 70s rock. Okay, I think you, that that's up there for some you of the greatest. You, did I did not know it. All. Greatest. This is, you got to go back and watch some of these music genres of all time, like eras of a music genre with 70s rock, because you had Fleetwood back, you had Eagles, Pink Floyd, Eagles. Zeppelin. All of these great bands that were in their primes in the 70s. I am a, I'm a Before child of the 80s. Up. I'm a child yeah. of the 80s, and I will have to agree with you. Yeah, I mean, I... I like, I like 70s ACDC. I like 70s uh, uh, Leonard Skinner. I like 70s Pink Floyd. Yeah, yeah, uh, I mean, it's... it's 80s U2. I think 80s U2, but they were right on the end of the 70s. Yeah, well, and I mean, with the '80s, I think that's really where you see pop really come more in as the it's starting to kind decade of take over. Because it was I Mike, mean, you had Michael, the King, you had the King in the '80s. Michael, who would beat both if you had what are their names? Kendrick Lamar and Drake. And, yeah, I, both of them together. I'm not gonna dispute And Michael, that. Get, they're done. But he's the king of pop. No. No, uh, you know, I go and I, I I still throw on Michael Jackson from time to time. I, I love him. He's, I mean, he's uh he's an asking stronghold. You know, if you can't think of any music to listen to, you just throw on Michael right. Jack. Well, I tell you um, what, it's, it. yeah. it's been a heck of a show. Yeah, Last it's been a I heck of a season. Show. I want to give a shout out to Morbius. Morbius, you made this yeah. happen for Thank me. You. Thank you. Um, you had a passion for this uh, to get this thing started. Uh, Statch, you put everything together and made the phone calls, and you gave a 51-year-old, going to be 52-year-old man, his dream. His, dream, yeah. his yeah. dream of being on a podcast. This is what I actually started in college doing. Really? Yeah, I was. Wow. I wanted to be wow. Indiana Original Jones podcast. at first. They didn't have that. I was on radio at Shepherd, but I didn't want to do all the writing, so I got into teaching, and this has been a dream. I hope that maybe, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for so much. Thank you for coming on. Thank you mm -hmm. for putting all this together, and I'm going to let you do do the yeah. ending. Well, I just, wanted, I just want to give out a couple thank yous as well. I was Mr. Show. Brown. Awesome. Yeah, thank you for coming on. You know, and actually a shout out here because this show would have never happened if it wasn't for I don't know if the other ones in here, but Skylar and Isabella. Thank you guys for the uh, yeah. uh, uh, idea of doing a podcast. Oh, uh, it was their idea? It was their idea. Awesome. They were the ones who were like, let's get I've Mr. Brown shout, on. I've been shouting out to the wrong people. And, you know, they... <laughs> Sorry. Before you said that. Thank you guys. Well, no, they got that, but they got us on. They, well, they they got you on, and they said we got to have Can Mr. Brown on. Can we announce the winner? Are we allowed to announce the winner? Yeah, and, yeah, and the winning yeah. podcast. They they were the ones who you, you gave one. us the baby of uh, best podcast one. at Muscleman. Muscleman. So, yeah. um, you know, and again, shout out to uh, Alexis. Uh, she's always doing our graphics. She yes, a great shout job. Out. Shout Can't out to wait. Corbin setting up our equipment all the time. He does a fantastic job. And yeah. shout out to uh, it takes Gigi a village. Can I say that it takes uh, a village? You know, just just for being in here and supporting the show. Yeah. Uh, so again, and thank you to Jake here. You're the final guest. I don't know where this is going to go. Yeah, I, it's, we don't it's know. Like, I want to do some stuff. It's like a summer. cowboy western that you're, you're on. You you get on your horse, yeah. and you're just riding off into the sunset. And I'm like, uh, stats and I are like, come back, Shane. Come. Yeah. Nobody even knows what I'm talking about. I have no idea. Come back, Shane. Nope. Come back. But, oh, and also shout out to Mr. Welch, of course. He's done a great job oh, this year. Oh, absolutely. Uh, being the uh, uh, broadcaster. It's teacher. tough being a Carolina Panther fan. Yeah. He's, and, but he's, he took it with stride yeah. this year. He's, he's the fan is over to you. Easy now. So, we don't want Tepper pulling up on us. Yeah. We don't want David no, Tepper pulling up. Oh, my gosh. No disrespect to the Panthers. Tepper will show up and take someone's hat off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and probably, yeah, I was going to say, he's probably going to throw a drink at a drink. <laughs> and we've had some big-time guests, too. I mean, yeah. uh, we had uh, Flowers on. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. We had... John Flowers, who's Skylar Callahan, who works for Sports Illustrated. Yep. Um, with me in football coach during yes. football week. Yep. So, Your father, yeah, we the had superintendent. Mr. I mean, come on. Mr. Cameron, uh, uh, Cameron Lasky, well, Don Jones. Dillinger, assistant superintendent. Yeah, we've, so, had, we've had a lot yeah. of, you know, and again, like yeah. I said, I'm, I'm super happy with how the podcast is. But the biggest thank you, of course, is to the viewers. Yes. Uh, you the guys hundreds watching of thousands it. You're the years. reason this thing is, is anything. Yeah. If you guys don't watch it, you know, I mean, we just be talking to Do we do reruns uh, in the summertime? Is that what we do? Like, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Just keep rolling. Out. Just keep rolling. Yeah. Out. If you missed it the first time, watch it the second time. Yeah. So, so yeah. But anyway, so I'm Stephen home. Morbius Askin. I'm Eric Ashby Brown, and I'm Jake Stevens. All right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you uh, for watching, and uh, this is the Hills of West Virginia podcast. Back to you at the studio. All right.